I want to welcome everyone to this webinar. I'm really happy to see so many showed up um, to our webinar about bridging knowledge gaps with adaptive project courses to empower students. And um, today we have two very nice speakers joining us. Um, one is Dr. Fulia Kula from the University of Twente and Elizabeth uh, Schmutzinger from Gospel. Some basic rules for this webinar. Um, we would like, so that the presentations are uninterrupted, we would like to ask you to, if you have questions, type them in the chat and we will answer them in between. Like when there, we have some Q&A boxes in between where we can answer these questions. Um, and also just a heads up, this webinar is being recorded. If you, yes. <laughs> just so you are aware of that. Um, after this very quick introduction, we will immediately also start with Dr. Fulia Kula, who will share her story um, of how she uses and integrates Basha courses. Uh, and then, like I said, there will be a quick Q&A where you can ask her your questions. After that, Elizabeth Schmutzinger will share some use cases, an example of other institutions of how they use brush-up courses in their teaching. And after that, you again have a chance to ask all of your questions. So without further ado, I will already hand over the word to you, Fulia. Thank you, Malisa. Maybe I can share my screen. Yes. I think you can see my screen now. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, numbers are important. Two is the number of iterations of my brush, of course. 12 is the research or contributions to education, particularly related to my brush up course. Nine is the number of institutions I have experienced teaching or curriculum development. 95 is the number of days I worked at a bilingual uh, Dutch school as a mathematics teacher at high, high school level. 443 is the total citation count I have on Google Scholar. 3,200 is the approximate distance in kilometers from my ha house to my parents. All these numbers are important, but what do they mean? How do we use and interpret them? It's not just about the numbers, collecting them and using, but it's more understanding the significance of these numbers. Whether in personal or professional level, these numbers tell a story. So what do they what do they only become valuable is when we extract insights from these, these numbers. When we look at data from the students' progress in brush-up courses, the numbers are just the beginning. The real value comes from in interpreting these numbers to improve the learning outcomes. By understanding the patterns behind data, we can identify where students need more support and adjust brush-up courses to help students to succeed, of course. I am Fulia Kula. I'm an assistant professor at the Applied Mathematics Department in, at the University of Twente with my research interest in the didactics of mathematics education. Today, I will guide you through the brush-up course called Bridging Course, which is a totally online course and aims to uh, support first-year students in guiding their mathematical transition from high school. I will also briefly inform about this course using the learning analytics to give, give personalized feedback to students and a class overview for the teachers. My aim in this presentation is to share in strategies integrating brush-up courses among students, ensuring all learners have the foundational knowledge that is needed to uh, succeed in their diverse educational needs and diverse educational settings. So I like to think and tell things in uh, order. So here's how this course was evolved. In the first year of mathematics at the university level, varying level of student knowledge creates significant challenges. Not all students have the same 
uh, foundational skills in the same level. And this diversity often leaves some students feeling lost and overwhelmed, impacting their engagement or maybe confidence motivation. Instructors struggle to maintain a steady pace that accommodates everyone. As a result, those who fall behind may come disengaged. To address varying knowledge levels, instructors often incorporate supplemental materials and create supportive environment. However, we as instructors have limited time to teach essential concepts as well. Without uh, preliminary knowledge, instructors cannot build on anything and therefore we cannot progress beyond remote learning. I also, perhaps just like many of you, found myself struggling to refer to the pre preliminary knowledge while I had limited time to teach my mathematics at the university level. Yet without this preliminary knowledge, I cannot build on anything and I cannot go beyond, beyond the remote learning. learning and it became clear that many students lack these foundational skills necessary. These are necessary to engage with the current mathematics they would, they would need at the university. What could I do to help? So to address this challenge, I collaborated with the teaching team and I established a dedicated four hour workshop for students to bridge this gap. With this time, this is in person, with this time I prepared a comprehensive workshop aimed at closing the knowledge divide. I carefully crafted materials and resources that fit within the four hour framework to enhance their understanding further. I directed students to various uh, instructor videos that I found on the web. So, however, I fa faced another hurdle. Despite all these efforts, the students didn't watch all these links that I sent them all these videos. This lack of engagement left me questioning how to ensure that students take advantage of these valuable sources. It was evident that simply providing materials wasn't enough. I needed to find more effective ways to motivate them to engage with this content. Then I thought, what if I had all these materials collected together on a platform? I would make it would make it easier to, for students to access the resources they need in a brush up course. So around the same time, I came across the mm, innovate, uh, call from 40 CEE uh, about innovation uh, in courses for that use lear learning analytics. So this opportunity sparked an idea with the support of this uh, source. The bridging course came into being. As you see, I, I wrote here in subscript one because it was the last September, uh, the last academic year September that we had the first iteration of this course. This is an online course on the learning management system called Canvas of the University of Twente, and it allows students to follow their uh, own pace and own time. Up to this moment is what I called the past. At the moment, this course is implemented as a second iteration to first year bachelor and pre-master students in four faculties and 11 departments. The future is yet to come and I'm very interested to see the results after the second iteration. So far we have 500 students engaged, more than 500 students engaged in this bridging course and it is very uh, encouraging to see that there are some positive results and we are evaluating the impact of the bridging course, course on students' foundational knowledge and learning experience. As we analyze the results from this iteration, I have to get, gain some insights that will allow us to further enhance this course uh, and better, students, better support students in their academic journeys. The bridging course is, now I'm going to talk about the content a little bit. This, is, this bridging course is designed around the mathematics B entry levels of students, which is Wisken de Bay in the Dutch educational system. And it emphasizes the concepts that directly related, uh, that are directly related to first year calculus courses. And we identified the essential topics, broke them down into subtopics and established a specific learning objectives for each of these. Here you can see the list of high school topics that 
are covered in the bridging course. How is this structure then? The structure of the bridging course is as follows. First, students encounter a pre-question designed around the learning objective necessarily. This multiple choice question includes various distractors that reflect the potential difficulties or misconceptions of students. If they answer correctly, they move on to the next subtopic, which is optional because they can continue with the video. If they answer incorrectly, again, we provide an instructive video. Although we didn't have time to record, record all these videos ourselves, we selected high quality content from the web. Embedded within these videos are questions that appear uh, as points here, you see. And at these moments, the video pauses, the students are prompt with another, uh, prompted with another, but shorter multiple choice question. They receive feedback and before, then after that, they resume the video. We conclude um, this cycle with a post question, which is similar, but not identical to the pre-question. Okay, so I share the structure of the bridging course with you. We have data from pre and post questions, as well as the follow-up questions that are embedded in the videos. And this data includes the number of attempts the, the students made, to uh, to give a correct or incorrect answer. So whether their final answer is correct or incorrect. We also gather more detailed information uh, with this videos, etc. But today, in today's webinar, I'm going to focus on the mentioned data about the questions. As you can imagine, we obtained the relevant ethical approvals. We asked students to consent questions, uh, a consent question before uh, entering the course as a prerequisite and, and therefore this ensures their agreement to participate or not. So uh, we provide feedback to both students and teachers. For students feedback is based on a star based system. If they earn up to a two and a half stars they receive a message indicating that they need to study further. As they accumulate more stars they understand that their prior knowledge aligns with the expectations for the first year talkers courses. So this feedback is given real time. So updating every time, this updates every time when the students engage with the course. Here you see two results of two students side by side. The student on the left obviously needs more study, while the student on the right has a better foundation from high school. You can observe this with the stars. This visualization is shared only with the students themselves. As for the teachers, we provide a cloth overview using heat maps, but let's go first through the legend. From light to dark green, it in indicates that students answered correctly. As the green darkens, it means students had more attempts. For instance, dark green 10 here means the student answered the correctly, incorrectly, on on the nine attempts and the only at the tenth attempts they answered correctly. If the students end up with the incorrect answers, this is shown in yellow, which darkens to orange or red with more attempts. So this is an example of the feedback we provide to teachers. The columns represent subtopics while the rows show individual students. I understand that teachers have limited time to spend per student, so this class overview is very significant. Teachers can focus on the darker columns, indicating that students had many attempts, or on the light co yellow columns, suggesting that students may be not very persistent in finding the correct answer. We do not instruct to, uh, teachers um, to interpret this uh, feedback, but we tell them uh, how it works, of course. And then so far, the teachers' responses were very positive. Both teachers and students find this tool very useful for understanding current state of affairs, either their own learning or the class overview. So how about the results? So far, the results of the first iteration are as follows. Uh, we had uh, a total of six, seven, 76 students and 56 of them gave us consent to, uh, to, put, to have uh, the results uh, on research purposes and the 
whole group uh, of the pass rate of the first calculus first mathematics course at the university was 75 percent this was very positive of course but we also collected some uh, uh, data uh, qualitative data during the panel and evaluation meetings we received uh, quite some positive remarks from both students and the teachers so the second iteration is at the moment going on and uh, the course is implemented to four faculties 11 departments the results are still coming in and we have observed that more than 500 students are engaged with the course so to recap brush up courses are essential to, for addressing uh, diverse knowledge levels in our classrooms ensuring that all students have the foundation knowledge that they need to succeed we discussed strategies for designing and implementing these courses to personalize the learning experience and the future seems very promising at least to me i would encourage teachers to who are willing to implement such brush up courses to uh, start small by incorporating a brush up course or adaptive solution into the curriculum and gradually scale up on the results that are observed. You could also think of collaboration and this can take many forms. For instance, you might consider to implementing the same course, take the same course as it is by simply cloning it for yourself. Alternatively, you can use this course as a skeleton and develop your own version. The good news is that you don't have to cover the entire four years of high school content in mathematics, so you don't. It will not probably take so long of a time, but it's definitely worth uh, to see the results as improved learning outcomes. So now I'd like to hear from you what challenges you had faced in your teaching or curriculum design related to bridging these knowledge gaps and. Have you found, have you implemented some strategies? Have you found them useful? Do you have feedback for me or any questions? But before this, I thank you very much for your attention today. And here is my email. Feel free to uh, get in touch with me, please. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, really, really interesting to hear your insight on how you integrated the brush up courses in your faculty. Um, and now, yeah, I would invite you, if you have any questions for Fulia, please um, either feel free to unmute yourself or write it in the chat box and I will read the question out loud. Maybe I can ask them questions if they have this kind of uh, difficulties in their classes and in yes. their strategies. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe I can ask a question that uh, came to my mind. Um, what would you say, like, what would be your recommendation regarding the timing of such a brush up course? Like, would you recommend to put it really at the beginning between before they even start the semester so that they are already caught up or somewhere in between as they progress throughout the course? Yeah, I think I think a good idea to is to implement this uh, in, in two time uh, points of time, like maybe uh, beginning definitely and also during because some sometimes when we see the students struggling and then at that very moment they need to go to that uh, relevant subtopic or topic and then they need to say okay study that so it could be uh, two points in time definitely be before because then they can really study but some students are do not have the time or can, are not very much motivated so this could be two ideas i would do them both that is yeah provide them in yeah during before and also during the course 
Okay, I now see that we also have questions in the chat. Um, what would what is the price if you want to implement it for two hundred students with teacher overview of performance of students? Okay, this is this is a, a question, very technical question. Um, so the price, okay, no, uh, the price is like the, to develop this kind of a course. It took me and my team. Uh, for people actively working together for a year, but we were this we were supported. Uh, of course, we need some licenses and some some mentors. But I I don't want to make anyone afraid with saying that one year because we are still improving, right? So we still have some uh, improvement points, and uh, we are covering all high school content. So if you are thinking of such a course, just take hours, uh, you can clone it. But if you are thinking of it for a quartile, for instance, that will be uh, much less time taking because we have to cover uh, the the high school mathematics knowledge that is four year. Mm. And I also, when, I think I also answered the question of Lineke. How much yes. time did it take? Yeah. There's actually already a, another question. Uh, what do you do if students fail? Is it required to pass the brush-up course or how do you deal with that? It depends on the program. Some programs find it very important, all programs find it important, but some find it much more important so, so that they add that, this to their uh, curriculum as mandatory. In that case, we just still leave this to the students, uh, the responsibility. We ask them to uh, just go through all of the topics and subtopics. And if they did, they surpass. But we give this to students' own responsibility and we say, okay, you know, this is, this is a nice uh, brush up course. It's to refresh your knowledge. And uh, yeah, we cannot force any, them any further. So, uh the thing is that we cannot ask them to we cannot yeah quantify their grades because they already have entered the university right so they had succeeded their entry level so that's why um we are not saying okay you fa you fail or if you have less than five points out of ten or something we're just saying it's a pass if it is yeah we we, we we mentioned it's the past if it's just if you have gone through the whole thing and we we treat them as adults i don't know if, it's, if, if it answers that yeah that's how we implement it and um, there's another question did you receive any pushback from the faculty regarding adding this to your course um oh, that's a very nice question actually i uh, am very much supported with my faculty just the inverse because i think my faculty also sees the value in this uh, and then the um, absence of this kind of uh, knowledge and how important it is so they have also given me a fellowship a senior fellowship sorry by, uh, but, uh, from this so no pushbacks but just like uh, very good support without that support i think it wouldn't be going this far so that's great to hear Thanks. and what did your students think of this course you know there are students that i um let's say there are two kinds of students who don't need these courses and who do uh, within those who do need these courses some find it very useful and some others do not really go through it because some i i can there are some students who uh haven't managed about their time to study their calculus first year mathematics so they don't maybe have time etc so if those students who are very much engaged in this course courses i when i talked with them uh they they find it very useful especially to know what is expected from them for the for a success in their first year mathematics and uh, to to know what kind of uh, topics they need to uh, cover up for a successful mathematics uh, university uh, career yeah thanks and uh, there's <laughs> the questions keep coming in it's uh, oh, great really interesting <laughs> um i would prefer if we quickly finish the or go to the second part of the webinar 
so that we don't run into timing issues. And we will go back to these questions afterwards, because okay. maybe also the audience will get some more inspiration from the second part as well. Yeah. But thank you so much, Fulia, already for sharing your insights. You and Elizabeth, yeah. I will hand over the word to you now. Thank you, Fulia. That was uh, definitely interesting that I would like to make sure I continue that as well. I was in the middle of my presentation. So uh, adding to the story of Puglia, I would like to share some of the many brush up, fresh up, pick up uh, courses that we see a lot of our customers use. Uh, and also what makes them um, address the challenge in, in many ways, how we see it and how, how that is designed, as uh, also fully I told you. There is people having math anxiety. It's not a myth. It's something that is out there. And another element that I think is addressed with brush up courses is the fact that there that we have a forgetting curve yes people pass their exam we've done the math you're in uh, in the university but it doesn't mean that you know and that you have the exact knowledge available when you actually need it and on top of the struggle that we see uh, which is in any which is in technical universities, which is in social studies, doing statistics. And I think that's what we want to do all together is to make it really accessible for everyone, not for the ones that get it just because they, they do. But ultimately, we believe strongly that everyone is capable of learning these concepts. But it does apply a personal way of teaching. And I think also, Fulia, you mentioned it when you mentioned the numbers at your introduction. It's not just the numbers. It's not just understanding the abstract functionalities, but it's also having the time in your classrooms to make the connection, to make them into the stories, what it is that they learn these concepts for, right? So, and again, previously mentioned, how do you deal with that if you have large classes with a huge variation of pre-knowledge um, and I think that's where products like uh, Graspel, Canvas, LMSs, uh, even uh, ChatGPT if you wish come in where you can help people understand their level of what it is that they need to know. And in our approach, just to preach a little bit to our crier, of course, it is very much also related to OER and open exercises. Again, already mentioned, a lot of teachers, this is additional to what they already have to do. And there is a lot of material and examples out there. What is key, though, is I think that this, to make it teachable and learnable, it needs structure, it needs an infrastructure, you need to order the materials that you that you serve or that you make available uh, to the learners in a similar way that we saw in the previous presentation. So you need to create courses, which again, looking back to the questions that we already saw, how much does it cost? How much time do I need to spend? Where do I get started? And this is kind of where I would like to share with you how we see people approach it from a designing perspective. I'm an industrial design engineer uh, from teaching, and um, this is the way that I generally loved working is to kind of simplify a larger pro uh, pro problem into buckets. So you have sub elements, and you have a lot of different solutions to, to solve those sub elements and you come up with different concepts and the same can be applied with a course like the question was asked is it mandatory is it optional do you need to do an exam at the end is it for everyone is it just for a few is it before you start a course the main course is it during a main course is it a hybrid so there are a lot of choices to be made when it comes to designing the course 
And I think it helps when you have a clear kind of objective and you also make choices in how, which kind of partial solutions think you think help best for these specific uh, objectives. And with that in mind and knowing the building blocks that you have, for instance, in an environment like Graspel, where you, and it's same with LMSs or, or other tools, is that you've got your lessons. Do, do I need to, to really explain everything fully? Or is it just a refreshment level lesson? Is it integrated to my LMS or not? So things like that. But then I think a lot of big, big, big things that come to the brush up courses and the refreshment has to do with feedback. Feedback that is given to teachers, but it's given to students at every level that they actually interact with the learning path. And that's also an element of how to structure your courses. So this is an example that's being used at a uh, course where it is prior to the course. So before people start their main topic, they need to pass certain hoops. They need to show they have certain pre-skills, which is in this case done purely, if you see at the top, with diagnostic tests. By doing the diagnostic tests, the students do get feedback based on how they performed and they get insights on which specific elements they could still work on to bring it up to level. So that's what you show see on the lower level modules where I have certain parts green and certain parts with the red question mark just telling me if I want to improve on these subjects, these are the areas that I could work on. And that makes it personal from a learning perspective. It gives me guidance when I do my testing and I do my learning. And when I've done all the three diagnostic tests, I get different feedback. And there are a lot of areas that I'm already good enough. I'm passing, so I don't, I'm okay with not spending as much time on the ones that have the triangle. And I think it's important to help the students because a lot of the brush up courses are done in self-study and sometimes combined with workshops. And the same what you said, uh, Dr. Villiers, as well, is that there are also a lot of students that might not participate because they don't know it exists, they don't feel the need, or they don't see they have the time. But this is also designed to give them guidance on every type of students. So the ones that are already really up to scratch, they'll, they'll show much more green than the others. So in this case, students, they're the left side and the right side topics are covered. My main concern is this student, they should spend more on the center and the spread distribution. And every time the student interacts with the exercises, these information will change to their ability, which should provide also some motivation. And it's not only on that level where you would uh, see the feedback coming in. I think, again, when people actually study and practice their exercises it is also a good feedback to give them when they are learning so when they make mistakes they can actually see what happens with the answer that they gave and then with that information they might have the ability to retry the same question and actually do it right this time and again get feedback on really understanding what made it the right answer? And then moving forward to go to the next question. I hope that was something you could see in a... And again, if you change the details of your course concept, it does change also the details of how a course should look like. 
So just briefly want to show you a different course. Are you still seeing the changes in my screen? Yeah. Um, so this is a different course because it's different setup due to the fact that it's something that they will do during uh, the course setup. So at the beginning, they can do some refreshments. They can go through the topics and refresh their memories and their knowledge. And again, the coloring will give them guidance on how they are doing. So at the end of this first phase, people are being asked at some point to plan a meeting with their mentor because based on what they've done in their, in their refreshment courses, it will be determined what other refreshment or brush up material they might need during the course. And then the rest of the course is organized or the brush up parts. It is a mixture of what is being done in the course, but also what is being done as homework. So again, based on what they have as a pre knowledge and also based on their refreshment tra uh, track, they have their personal setting in what it is they need to be prepared for. And then it is also clarified in this setup what is being treated and discussed in class, what is homework, and what are mandatory things to do before coming in to the next class. So with the main purpose that when you have all the students in class, they have this specific knowledge tested refreshed and ready to be used so all of them in class should have a certain similar level of understanding of those concepts and you can spend the class on bringing it into context and i think that's a lot of where it is iterative ways of working will help bringing in the brush up and then we did generally talk about the uh, blended learning, which is not necessarily the newest thing, but I think it's a different way of applying it. There are so many ways of addressing the challenges that students might have. And again, in this case, the it is built up uh, as an example where every week has a same build up. There is a clear learning goals uh, there is a basic of, of knowledge that you need to have. And then there is a test that they, they can do. And the outcome of the test will again give the student and teachers feedback on where everyone's knowledge is at that certain time and where they need help. And that help can be given by the teachers in the classroom because they are aware that there are subjects that many students are struggling with and when it are very individual struggles, then there is still material available for students to specifically learn on those subjects because they have the same information about their abilities. And these information are being built up by their practicing effort. I just stops sharing my screen. Um, so I briefly wanted to give you uh, some quick examples of how courses can be designed um, and what it, how they differ the, depending on the objectives, on the type of audience, and also on the elements of how you want to apply the course. Um, and there is a lot of these examples available which could save you a lot of time. Um, and I think uh, in general, um, many people will be willing to share their experiences with that as well. Any questions? Thank you so much already, Elizabeth, for also your part of uh, in giving us some more insights on how the different setups can look like. Um, yes, I would open up the floor for also questions to Elizabeth or questions into the round in general.
Elizabeth, there is already a question coming in. Um, why did you choose Python? 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 We didn't, I didn't choose Python as such. Uh, the example that I used is a, a brush up course that is part of the, a course for uh, machine learning. And uh, so I used their setup and I copied it and I changed it a little bit. Um, so it's designed specifically for learning management, uh, for, uh, for machine learning, sorry. And uh, for the specific reason that they really wanted as much student to be uh, applicable or to be accessible for this course, but they were also aware that there were huge math skills differences behind it. So this brush up course was very much related to we want every week or every two weeks, we want to make sure that everyone is at the same pace at a certain math skill and then apply it in the classroom, which is related to machine learning so that they don't do the math teaching while it actually should be part of machine learning. Is that a question, an answer to your question? If not, just let me know. Sorry, I see it. Um, that depends on the teachers themselves. You, uh, you can do it fully from scratch, which uh, is always possible. I mean, ultimately, it is the teacher who is in control of that. Um, but there is a lot of time to save by the existing material that's out there that can be shared uh, when it comes to structure, when it comes to the exercises. Uh, so the majority is is out there. And specifically, I think when we talk brush up courses, the level uh, of materials is available. But again, uh, as Fulia also mentioned, it is very much related to context. So in that case, I could imagine that you want to still want to make small changes uh, to the material that's out there. And another question that was asked in relationship to that was more about uh, intellectual property. Um, I think that in general, uh, it depends if you make it from scratch. And again, it depends per country uh, and per institution. Uh, but within the system, as we see it, uh, you are always in control of what type of licenses you want to give the material. So you can, you can put it to the world. You can share it with your neighbor. You can share it within your institution. You can share it among institutions. Again, that's up to the person that creates it. Uh, did you receive pushback from a faculty? I oh, know this isn't already. <laughs> This was still the old questions from yeah. previous. <laughs> uh, did we answer the questions? Is somebody still feeling they have a question? Um, there was one question still for Fulia before uh, that I find quite interesting. Um, from the first to the second iteration that you did, what were the biggest changes or learnings that you made that you had? So what? What did you change up for the second try? Okay, so the, thank you. That's also interesting for me. I thought, oh, I, I, I want to answer that. So for the first iteration, there were a group of approximately 80 students. And the second iteration is like 500. So it's like a lot of data. So we needed to clone the course uh, to show the uh, students and the teachers the respective feedback. And uh, so we needed that. And then what we did to, was to continue to improve, which means that we, in the first iteration, we saw some videos were not really uh, very much watched. So we thought, okay, we can record this kind of videos uh, because we didn't record all of it, as I said. But uh, so we did that. And then um, this was the, these were the changes more or less um uh, the learnings like i'm still looking for for the uh, results to finish uh, end up and then in the end i will take a look at the uh yeah the results but the the thing is like we also implemented this to the pre-master students 
And what I observed, what we observed was like pre-master students took it very differently than the first year students because these students are really having a disciplined way and then they took the, their own responsibility. They were very much interactively uh, involved and they were asking a lot of questions because in the in the commas we embed uh, I'm confused button and every time they are confused they, they didn't mind sending a lot of confusion to us and then about all the questions or so th these are these are the data that we have collected and we will definitely use it to see so that learning from our our side was that it depends on the students how they take it if they have if they are first year students they are maybe like very excited to start university very nice but uh, taking the responsibility of the, their own learning makes a difference too yes i hope this answers the question yeah i think so thank you um I think with that, we are kind of coming to an end. I just quickly looked at the time as well. Um, I really wanna say thank you to everyone who joined. It was a really nice conversation also going on in the chat. A big thank you, of course, to you, Fulia and Elizabeth. Um, and for everyone who also wants to learn more about it, talk more about it, about their own scenario, maybe, uh, you can always reach out to us at Graspo um, or to Fulia. Um, personally and i hope yeah to see you soon uh, for another webinar or for yeah another event um so yeah thank you very much